Here's a few news articles that I thought were interesting. LastPass apparently has been hacked again. It was hacked a few weeks ago, and apparently it's been hacked again. And uh, there's very little information here um, about what happened or what the consequences are. So, I don't know what to conclude about it. So, we'll see if any more comes out about that. Um, this recollapse is talking about um, fuzzing the web for um, these vulnerabilities that have to do with regular expressions. And what he points out, he or she, whoever wrote this, 0xACB, so Lord only knows. Anyway, um, this person points out that very few people can actually write a regular expression properly. Um, and what they mostly do is just download them from uh, Stack Exchange and other repositories, and they often have bugs in them. So he points out um, they are quite difficult to write. So here's one. This one is one people use for email. I think trying to make sure it's got an at and then a dot and some characters. And he points out there are other, there are other things that are not emails that will pass through that and turn into strange things. Um, so anyway, he um, just try to hold, can fuzz and find a whole lot of uh, vulnerabilities that come from improperly uh, encoding regular expressions, which is a very big problem. I know it also fouls up snort. Uh, snort rules use regular expressions or something like them, and it's very easy to write a snort rule that has a denial of service effect, where a certain packet will use up too much CPU. Now, HTTP2 is currently in use to some extent, and HTTP3 is coming, and HTTP2 and HTTP3 are going to have a strange property, they already do, called um, first request routing, where if you have uh, two websites hosted on the same server with different domain names, but the same IP address, then it will just take the where the first one goes and have the other ones follow the first one, since they're all supposedly going to the same place. That's called first request routing. The problem is a lot of people, like I do, use reverse proxies, where when you talk to my server, you're actually talking to a proxy server in front of my server that serves many websites. So completely unrelated websites can easily be on what appears to be the same IP address from the outside there. And if that's true, then it will send subsequent requests to the wrong backend. And what you can do, the end result is very much like DNS rebinding. Um, so if you send a request to WordPress, followed by a secure website, if I have a cross-site scripting on your WordPress website, I can send a message to your WordPress website, which will send a response-containing script, but your browser will send a request to secure.example.com and get the reply from there and interpret it as coming from this insecure site. So the point is, even if you do not have a cross-site scripting vulnerability on your page, I can bounce the cross-site scripting attack off another insecure page that goes through the same proxy server and fool you. So that is an interesting, bizarre attack and uh, a complicated version of HTTP response splitting. Uh, anyway, a way to inject code onto websites having to do with the attempts to make the new HTTP2 protocol more efficient. This is often the case that an attempt to make a web protocol more efficient also makes it less secure. Uh, this one we were talking about on Paul's Security Podcast. It's pretty good fun. Uh, you can send messages to a smartwatch for spear phishing. And what you do is you take the app, which is on your phone, and reverse engineer it and find the uh, Bluetooth low energy messages that it sends to the phone. And it turns out that these are often insecure and easily spoofed. And then you can just send fake uh, messages from this FitFro Android app, which will then appear on the phone and pop up messages, whatever type you like. So that's pretty cute. And of course, people are likely to just click OK or something on a phone message because they can't really see much. And this one is quite nice. If you've been doing the projects in uh, these classes, you've probably tried the ones where you steal passwords from memory of, of LastPass and other password managers. And here's a nice article full of other techniques, quite a few cute techniques to find passwords on Linux systems and dump them out. And I'd put it in the chat if I could find it. There's the chat. All right. Anyway. All right. I think that's enough of that. Let me stop.